my budget builds here with and we are finishing up the command edition uh paint paint tutorial set this is the terrain that we're finishing off on and uh sin she's the one that did the terrain on this one uh did you have a good time doing this set i did there was tons of detail yeah i could tell you spent a lot of time making sure that you got every single little inch cover that you wanted to get covered yeah i bet you if i looked at it i'd find something else there's there's always more to do <laughs> but i thought it turned out really nice so you came over with it looks like a cream color for your for your base over the prime yeah i mixed uh some paint together to get the wraith bone look that i saw um, on a tutorial because i wanted to you know paint the same similar colors it looks great with those colors actually it almost comes off as like a marble look which yeah, I think and is it could really, have it could have easily been a marble. It looks really nice. The I really like the archways and stuff over the doorways. I mean, there was just really nice detail on these pieces. There really is. I mean, there's a, I mean, it's very very detailed, <laughs> but um, it takes a lot of paint just for the ba base coat. So you you worked your your way from the biggest pieces to the smallest pieces. Was that your process to kind of get the, the most big... difficult to easy is like the way I like to do it. And that bigger piece is going to need the most time to dry, anyways. Yes. So you're gonna have it to. It dries pretty quick on the plastic. Yeah, I've noticed that quicker I'm... than uh, metal figures. Definitely, as we uh we mentioned in one of our last videos, if you want to check one of those out, yeah, metal figures do take a little bit longer to dry, especially in cold weather. So if you make um a mistake you only have maybe less than a second to wipe it off yeah you have to be really quick about it or you're just gonna probably end up smearing it for the most part it's yeah. usually best to take back in maybe with a little bit of water and pick it back up usually it'll help like uh re resaturate keep it from drying and adhering yeah uh, i try not to thin it out too much because i don't want to go back over again yeah yeah of course of course i like the um the vent fans, they, those were a really nice detail on these pieces. Yeah, they, I mean, there's even pipe and pipe underneath the grid floors. So you, if you really, you can go as detailed as you want to with these pieces. You don't have to, but it's kind of fun to take care of those details. I noticed on the tutorial, they primed it first with the base color that they wanted, which probably saves on paint, but primer is kind of expensive on its own. Yeah. And I do like the way the shadows come in from the black primer. It does. It really pops through when you come come on with a lighter color base. It's it's a nice contrast. It helps make it kind of... It lets the details pop, right? Because you're not going to get a perfect coating to where the the depth of field is thrown off. The black really brings in the, the lower layers out to make it easier to see. Yeah. Now, now, the windows... Um, the windows, the broken windows, um, where, was it hard to get in between the grating to do those? No, it wasn't. I mean, you do have to make sure you get in, in them if you want to cover it all. Or you can just lightly do it. Uh, you could do a dry brush. I think you could do this piece and dry brush only if you just wanted to be use less paint and make still make it look good. I think it looks really nice, though. Um, I like that thicker coating because as you come on with the more detailed layers, it really has a... I don't know. It just seems more realistic to me. The more solid the colors come through over time. It is. Um, with a lighter color, if you're playing on like doing any reds or anything like that, it shows up better. So I went ahead and just coated everything yes. uh, with the paint. And the black did still come through. So it adds to like the wear and tear of the, the pieces. There's some of that, that red coloring as you're coming across that, that broken window there. Yeah, I took a smaller brush to get in between. It wasn't really... Plus, I didn't want to get it on the white. Oh, that's got to be the most frustrating when you when you're, when you you start. Your hand starts to get tired. Maybe your brush stroke isn't quite so even. And Our bristle you, sticks out. And then you hit then you hit your white space. You're like, oh, I have to come back and get that later with maybe two strokes. I yeah, we recently watched the tutorial with uh, taking care of your brushes with Squidmar. I might want to check him out. He's really, really talented and good at what he does. So we learned a lot uh, toward the end of this session of painting about taking care of our brushes because I noticed the bristles just 
were getting really worn. Yeah, as you as you start to do more of these textured pieces, and if you're not careful, after watching the video, I could really see how easy it is for your brushes brushes to mess up over time. It's really a delicate touch, which you have for the most part. I'm a little rougher on the brushes than um than you are. You're a little bit better about it. Yeah, he tells you not to push uh, the bristles against anything with you know pressure. And sometimes to get into smaller places, you kind of have to. But if you do, just use a cheaper brush. Yeah. This is a cheaper brush. I'm not really fond of this one. The bristles could be thicker. It's just too flat. And when it gets wet, it just all sticks together and just stays bent as you're painting. Uh, it's not really a, a fluid brush. No. Yeah. You can tell a huge difference with all of the stuff we've been painting. I just, I really appreciate a good brush. A, a good brush really makes a difference, you know, uh, each tool for its own thing, you know, as you do your detailed works, having having the right brush to really, to not have to worry about stray hairs or anything fraying out and, and picking up on details you don't want it to pick up on that you're trying to save for later coats or, I mean, it's it's really important. It's, it's a very important aspect. Yeah, and on the Games Workshop tutorial, they use Citadel paints, uh, they use three layers of everything, and, um... That's fine, but we didn't have the same things, and sometimes you just have to compensate for what you don't have, and you can still make it look great. It doesn't have to have three layers. I mean, that's the main part of creativity, right? Is making something out of what you have, and 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 it's a style and a personality all your own. Yeah, because I didn't follow the tutorial completely. I just I kind of changed up on the um the skull that you see uh, on the other pieces with the monocle. Which yeah. We switched up the colors on that. You wanted to see the white on the opposite side of what it's supposed to be. I thought it would make the red monocle or the monocle pop out more as you detailed it. And I, I, yeah. think it, I think it turned out really nice. And this, you know, the red is really a, a darker base. It's a burgundy, basically. And then I went back and dried brushed with red. A brighter red color. This is where I'm going over with gray uh, for the metal pieces that I wanted to look uh, silver and rusted. So I did a gray base, and then I went over and dry brush with silver. As I was watching you paint, I mean, it all looked good as you went, but as you started putting on these gray, these gray accents, that's when I kind of felt everything start started coming together. Yeah, I almost, almost regret it. Well, I don't know about regret, but I didn't want to do the rust color because it would look so clean, but it, they are ruins. They're ruins, so you want them to look old. Yeah, it, it really did look clean and pop. Um, I, I did like when the rust came on afterwards as well, but it's just this gray. You know, once you really put your third color on something, you start getting into your third color of painting. You start to really see the details pop through. You know, you're, you're really starting to see what you're, what you're planning on taking shape. Usually on the second color, it's easy to worry, isn't it? Right? Like, is this combination going to work? What am I going to use for my yeah. third color? I think you have a better time with that. It takes me longer to decide. <laughs> but with it already being in the color scheme presented from Games Workshop, um, I, I liked the color as soon as I saw it before I even started on this set. So you knew exactly what you were going for right away. You knew how it was going to turn out in the end for the most part. Slightly different, right? Because your own shades, your own colors, your own brush yeah. accents. Yeah. I mean, but you, you, knew, you knew that color combination, that contrast was really going to look nice. Yeah, it was, it was very interesting to see it come together. And then we had to come up with a, like I used to, kind of an orange brown acrylic paint added some orange to it added some yellow to it for the rust and it as it dried it turned like a rust color now i see you switched to a more flatter brush in in um for some of the uh riveted sections did, did that make the the work easier for you are you talking about the smaller flat brush there was a yeah it was a short flat brush with a gray handle I think that was one of the newer brushes, and that, yeah, for the for the dry brushing. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I did that for dry brushing. Okay, yeah, I mean, does that, the, do those short, flatter brushes make it easier to dry brush? They actually do. As, if it's a good brush, it does. Because you can use, the, I like a flat brush for, you know, medium-sized stuff, because it covers well, and then if you have to get, um, and more of an angle at something, you can use the corner or the edge. 
I to get in there, you know, like slim uh, areas. Okay. Slim fitting areas, yeah. Is that the one you're talking yes, about? Yes, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, right I, I kind of like that brush. That's a very good brush. But the bristles were, when we received it, it was with our Slanesh set, uh, which I love. I can't wait to do that one. This brush came in it with that. And the, she had good brushes. Um, this one has a few bristles that were kind of like bent outwards. And but we can come back through and fix those. I mean, if, if you're mostly using it. didn't really cause as much trouble as I was concerned about. It actually turned out pretty good. I, I think it's, it's looking really nice at this point. Um, there's just so much details. All the little piping that you're having to come across and do. I, it takes a lot of patience to do, to do these larger sets of terrain at once, especially the, uh, you know, the pre-made ones from Games Workshop. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, I love them. It's just it, it will take time. It took more time than I thought it would. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's been a little bit since we uh, we've uploaded a video. Uh, but it should be coming along a lot quicker now. We have some some things coming through the works. It shouldn't take nearly as long. But I mean, this was really worth it. I can't wait to put it on the table and play with it. Yeah. Uh, well, we we've done some practice games with with in this terrain, haven't we? Not yeah, we're all trying to learn the rules, and we're still at the basic level. We haven't really got into some of the things that seem more interesting. And we did add terrain um, rules to it, which I like better because I played that way. Terrain always made a difference in miniatures for me when I was growing up. Yeah, it just took some time. We we're just working through adding on each layer of the rules. Yeah, so we can get a good grasp. Yeah. And, and we yeah. discover you need just one chief on rules because it can easily turn into... Um, a back and forth about, yeah, well, what about confrontation. this? confrontation. Yeah. I mean, it's all about having fun. You know, it's not about who wins or lose, loses, you know. and No, it really isn't. It's about uh, enjoying the strategy of each player and, and of the troops that you're playing. It's an extension of what you've done so far. It's a it's a physical extension of what you what you've put your work into your artwork, right? Painting the terrain or creating the terrain, painting the figures, building your army. You know, all this thought, all this creation goes into it. it it's a nice kind of culmination of it, and there's a, there's enjoyment in that. You know, of seeing something you built come together. Yeah, this was a a wash, a black wash that I did. I did. I did the silver, um, well, gray, then silver, um, especially inside the grate. I wanted the silver to show. And then I dry brushed it with silver, and then I washed it with black. I thought it looked really nice when you started coming through with the, that, that wash. It started making the metal seem more metallic. Rather than uh, just the flat matte gray, that was, yeah. yeah. And then, and then as you came across the rust on the outside, you really put some thought about what what would be hit by rust and what wouldn't be hit by yeah, rust. Yeah, I was trying to think of the waterfall. You know, if there's any water, and how it would fall in and catch in places. I'm still not an expert at it. Nothing like squid mar. <laughs> but, but it's it, fun um, to practice and get better at it. Yeah. You know, I think I think um, you'd, especially your skill in particular with painting. Because you've been doing most of the painting for the channel so far has, has if jumped, more jumped hugely. And um, if you want to see our skills increase in all that we do, whether it's building or painting, you can always check out by uh, subscribing to our channel. If you like this video, then hit that like button. If you um, if you want to leave a comment and give us some ideas, you can always leave a comment down below. If you want to participate in this channel, we'll also be putting our cash tag down below. We just want to thank you for joining us and uh, have a nice day. Yeah, see ya. See ya. Of Dan Nynan's horrendous comedy, but since those clips were the reason he was able to make the video.